Uh, Josh Fuhr is executive director of the uh, Gresham Redevelopment Commission. Uh, he's also a uh, prior uh, commissioner for the city of Gresham. <clears throat> he's also the president of Ariston Development Company, a very smart guy and a personal friend. I'm honored to welcome him to the podium first. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Brian. Thank you, Lynn. Um, thank you all for, for being here today. I was here, what was it, Brian? Was it two years ago? Gosh, I want to say it's, go, it's yeah. gone by fast. Uh, talking about a nascent project in the heart of the Rockwood Town Center. And I'm really pleased to be here again to give you an update on our project and its progress and some exciting news coming up here in the next few months. So, um, as you all know, Rockwood uh, is a neighborhood in West Gresham that has gone under, undergone tremendous change over the last 20 years. Uh, some of it not so positive, some of it actually very positive. And we're about to write a new chapter in the history of Rockwood that is, I think, its most exciting chapter yet. So. Um, uh, this is going to be a little hard to see for some of you folks in the back of the room, but uh, everybody familiar with where Rockwood is uh, on the west side of Gresham, uh, along 181st, uh, where Burnside and Stark come together is, is the town center. Uh, there used to be a Fred Meyer store right along the Max Line there, if you recall, if you've been around for as long as I have. Uh, that's not there anymore. The city acquired that site about 11 years ago and have been trying to redevelop it ever since. And um, as, we, as we look at the uh, future of Rockwood and some of the challenges that we find there, uh, and just to highlight a couple of those, Rockwood is actually Oregon's most economically challenged neighborhood. Uh, it also has some of, the, some of the most significant healthcare challenges in the state. Uh, as a result, there's, there's a tremendous need on a variety of levels. And so instead of trying to take this really catalytic, pivotal site in the heart of the town center and plunk something down that, uh, that worked somewhere else that might uh, fit sort of the mold of what we think of when we think of new development in, in an urban context. We actually just took a step back and we said to the community, what does this town center want to be? What are your aspirations for Rockwood? What are your hopes and dreams for what Rockwood could become in the future? And so uh, the city, my team in the Urban Renewal Agency, we spent the better part of two years uh, engaging with the community, really doing a deep dive into uh, what the community would like to see for itself. And actually, this is a process that's gone on really since the city acquired the site 10 years ago in different iterations. But we, we took a different approach. Uh, we brought on a number of what we call community liaisons, actually with the help of the Rockwood CDC and Brad's group, and um, reached out to people of color in the community that the city historically has not done a very good job of reaching, uh, found leaders in the Arabic community, the Somali community, the Hispanic community, the Russian and Slavic community, uh, and brought them into the fold as leaders in the community, in each of their communities, uh, and and worked with them to have them become advocates for our project. And what that did was it allowed us to get really rich, deep, diverse perspectives on Rockwood. Now Rockwood, if you're not familiar, is actually almost 50% non-white. There are over 70 languages spoken in the home. It's a very diverse neighborhood, one of the most diverse neighborhoods really in the state. So getting a broad cross section of feedback from the community about what the future of this place looks like is really important. Uh, and as a result, the project is, is designed around what the community told us, the feedback that we got. And, and time and again, the feedback that we got was really around a single common theme. The common theme is really around creating economic opportunity and economic empowerment in a community that desperately needs an economic shot in the arm and a chance to lift themselves up and make something uh, that will serve the local community. So, our project, overarching goal of the project is really to create economic empowerment and opportunity in Rockwood, and every component of the project that I'll talk about in a minute uh, feeds into that common narrative somehow, uh, some, somehow very unique. So just a quick overview, as I mentioned, the city acquired the site in 2006. Uh, we brought on a developer partner, RKM Development, in 2015 uh, through a competitive solicitation. We've got a number of um, uh, anchor tenants that have already committed to the project 
and uh, I'm going to walk you through uh, what we're doing and where we're going with this. So the development program really focuses on three core areas. The first is food. So when I grew up in Rockwood, we had seven major chain grocery stores in and around the neighborhood. Six of them are gone. There's one left. It's actually the most expensive grocery store in all of Gresham. We know that because we had some Portland State University students take a shopping list to all 13 major grocery stores in Gresham. The most expensive grocery store is in the poorest neighborhood that can least afford it. So access to healthy, affordable food is absolutely critical for this neighborhood. And right now, that access is really constrained. Uh, a lot of families rely on convenience stores and fast food restaurants to do to, to, to get most of their food access, or they have to drive four miles to Winco or even farther to Costco. That's a real challenge for a lot of families in Rockwood. So the first pillar here, first leg of the stool, is really addressing uh, accessibility to healthy, affordable food options. Uh, the second uh, piece of it is really hard for me to see from here. Um, <laughs> Skill building, okay, thank you. Uh, we have an economic cluster that is designed to allow folks in the community to take classes to gain uh, the skills that they need to get a living wage job either in the manufacturing sector or in the healthcare sector. So we have a large manufacturing component uh, to Rockwood. 45% of the jobs uh, in Gresham are actually in the manufacturing sector in the Rockwood area. Uh, and yet, even though Boeing has a million square feet of manufacturing space and John Deere and Pella Windows have all these manufacturing centers, they have positions they can't fill because they can't find skilled labor. At the same time, we have people living below the poverty line. So we need to, we need to bridge that gap. And so part of our project is designed to bridge that gap. Uh, it's also, uh, the third piece of this is also geared toward supporting small businesses. So. Um, we have a number of entrepreneurial people in the community that really would love to open a business, maybe don't have the skills, maybe don't have the capacity, maybe don't have the, the capital to do so. So lowering those barriers to entry is a really key component to this. Uh, so it's really those, those three core areas that we're trying to focus on to create as much economic opportunity for folks in Rockwood as possible. Uh, so. Uh, the, the path forward, we're in design right now, and I'll show you some of that in a minute. Uh, we're expecting to break ground on a $60 million development project on the old Fred Meyer site uh, as soon as August. Uh, so this is happening very quickly, or at least it, it appears to be happening quickly. It doesn't feel quickly for Amy and I, but, um, but it's very exciting because it's happening very soon. Uh, so, so what are we doing? We talked about starting with engaging the community. Um, this is a little word cloud that we did. Uh, in 2016, we actually had over 50 community engagement events in Rockwood. That's one a week. Uh, some big, rock the block. We had several thousand people, some very small. Um, but as a result, we got some really great feedback from the community. Uh, this word cloud is actually from the feedback that we got from over 300 community participants during the annual Rock the Block celebration in June of last year. And if any of you were there, I, I know Joan, I know you were there and a number of others were as well. Um, it was a very hot weekend. It was over 100 degrees that weekend. And so the feedback that we got might have been colored a little bit by the temperature. Uh, you see water is the biggest, uh, the biggest word on that word cloud. Uh, but, I, but I think the, the common thread here is that people really wanted a place where they could gather, a place uh, to have, uh, a place to meet friends, to create a living room for the community uh, that could host farmers markets and concerts and events uh, like Rock the Block, as well as having a place where they can uh, do their weekly grocery shopping, where they can grab lunch, uh, meet a friend, grab a cup of coffee, uh, as well as uh, get access to the resources that they need to gain access to that living wage job or to start that local business. So this feedback was really important for us to, to, to think about how to frame the project and the project um, program. So these are some shots of some of the community engagement events that we did during the year. Uh, I'll move through these kind of quickly. The design process, uh, we are toward the end of the design process now. The Gresham Design Commission will be uh, holding a hearing on their last hearing on the land use application and the de proposed design for the project uh, later this month. I think it's actually uh, next week. Uh, and then once that's approved, we go into uh, construction document production, and we should be in for permits um, uh, early to midsummer. So this is, again, moving quickly. Uh, so the master plan. 
So this is a, a, an overhead shot of the project looking from the east toward the west. The street you see in the foreground there is 187th Avenue. If you recall the old Rockwood Community Office building where the police department used to be in Rockwood, that's sort of right below where the, where the camera would be. Uh, looking west, that's the old Fred Meyer site. And on the left, you see an office building, and I'll describe uh, what that is in a minute. In the center is a market hall with about 30 food vendors all under one roof. And then, the, then on the right, uh, a mixed-use building with housing and ground floor retail. So the programming for this, I mentioned the economic cluster and the skill building. Uh, we have a number of anchor tenants that are a part of that. So Mount Hood Community College, uh, the Small Business Development Center is going to move to this site so that they can serve uh, all of the new businesses, uh, both on the site and in the neighborhood. Uh, they're coming with WorkSource Oregon, which is the partnership between the college, Work Systems Inc., and the Oregon Employment Department. That's where you go to get your uh, career counseling services, your unemployment benefits, your job search services. Uh, they will be located in this building, along with Metro East Community Media. Uh, Marty's here today with some of his team. They're a really important uh, tenant for us because they're going to be building a new TV production studio, not to replace the one on Cleveland, but to add to it, uh, as well as a digital innovation lab thinking of it as a digital makerspace so if you want to go in and take classes on uh, computers and media equipment you can do that you can tell your story in the community and, and have it broadcast uh, and uh, really filling the digital divide that exists in Rockwood just a side note um, Rockwood families don't have great access to computers or the internet in fact uh, uh, the wait time at the Rockwood Library, which is the most popular place to get online if you don't have a computer at home, on an average weekday afternoon is over two and a half hours. And there's only three computers. So there's a digital divide in Rockwood we're trying to, to bridge, and Metro East is a really important part of that, uh, that effort. Uh, uh, and then um, in the center, uh, the market hall. So as I mentioned, we've lost six of the major grocery stores in the area. We've tried to bring more in. Uh, we've, we actually uh, have, have had quite a recruiting effort. Uh, we've reached out to a number of, of large grocery stores, including Trader Joe's. Uh, they're not coming, so uh, we've decided to take a different approach, which is to empower local entrepreneurs to start local businesses to serve the local community. So the market hall will have a grocery component, uh, and we're thinking five to six vendors who each make up the major departments of a grocery store, so a meat vendor, a dairy vendor, a, a bakery vendor, uh, daily home essentials like paper towels and dish soap, as well as a number of prepared food vendors. Uh, so prepared food, you go in, it's kind of like a food cart pod under one roof, but with actual built out kitchens and um, uh, serving areas and so forth. And then finally, the mixed juice building on the right toward the north uh, on the corner of, uh, of Burnside and 187th will have uh, the first market rate housing units, uh, uh, apartment units in Rockwood in over 30 years. Uh, these are not subsidized, these are not income restricted, these are market rate units, uh, as well as a child care provider, a, uh, a health clinic, and uh, a community bank branch. So again, trying to meet some of the basic needs of the community uh, as they relate to how people in Rockwood you know, go through their daily lives. Unfortunately, too many people in Rockwood are too reliant on check cashing places uh, and uh, a need to have a community bank branch that can really um, meet their needs from a financial services perspective. So we're excited to have Albina Bank as our partner there. So I'll keep going through this a little bit more quickly. This is an overhead view. Uh, you can see the, the three buildings and the uh, plaza in the center. The old Rockwood Community Office building is gonna be renovated. That'll come in a second phase right on the heels of this, and they'll probably actually all open at the same time. Uh, the old Rockwood Community Office building is going to become a tech shop. So think of a, a maker space where you, you have an idea for a thing you wanna make, either as a hobby or as a business. You can go in, use the CAD-enabled workstations to design your widget. You can use the carpentry lab, the metals fabrication lab, the 3D printers, the laser cutters. All of the manufacturing equipment is there for you to to make your thing, and then the Small Business Development Center is there to help you take it to market. On the other hand, not everybody's looking to start a business. So if you are looking to gain access to that living wage job in the manufacturing sector, uh, you can go in and take classes on how to use the manufacturing equipment, work with WorkSource Oregon to get placed into one of those jobs in the manufacturing sector, and it's all for you there in one place. So no matter if you're trying to start a business, or gain access to a living wage job in manufacturing or healthcare, all of the resources that you need are here for you in this place. Uh, 
Um, I mentioned healthcare. Uh, we have a, a healthcare provider that's going to open a new clinic in the project uh, in partnership with Mountain Community College. So the college has a medical assistant training program. Their students are going to get rotations in the clinic. And what this does is it opens up a pathway for people in Rockwood uh, out of poverty and into a living wage job in the healthcare sector by serving the healthcare needs of their local community. Uh, so that's a really important uh, job creation tool as well as a healthcare delivery service tool as well. So we're really excited about that. Uh, the public plaza, I think this is one of the things that everybody gets really excited about. We're actually taking a page out of the arts plaza in downtown Gresham uh, in terms of, of place making. So this is going to be a plaza that's designed to be flexible, that can host big events with 2,000 people or just be a comfortable place to, to grab a bite uh, for lunch. Uh, there'll be three play areas for kids of different age groups. There'll be a couple of splash pads, just like we have in the Arts Plaza in downtown. So on those 100 degree weekends in the summertime, kids have a place to, to splash around and keep cool and, uh, and keep themselves entertained while mom and dad grab lunch. This is a view into the plaza from the mixed use building to the north. Uh, so you can see it's got a lot of potential for creating a really dynamic place. And I should mention that the office building and the mixed use building are ringed on the ground floor with ground floor retail. So lots of storefronts, lots of activity, lots of merchandise spilling out onto the sidewalk, cafe tables and chairs and umbrellas and those sorts of things to create a really inviting place. Uh, I think that, that placemaking is really important when we talk about changing the perception of Rockwood. Uh, Rockwood has a perception problem. And I think as we start to create places that are attractive, inviting, and feel safe, uh, that perception will start to change. So this is a view from the, from the ground floor looking into the plaza. And again, you can see kind of what it will feel like walking through at the, at the ground level. Uh, and then I'll talk here uh, about the office building. But first, I want to show you, uh, actually, I think I've got a little video I'm going to show you, but it might be another slide or two in here. Uh, OK, before I get to the video, a little bit about the office building. So this is looking from the courthouse at 185th and Stark uh, into the project, looking northeast. There's a parking area on the southwest corner. And then you've got the WorkSource Oregon entrance right there on the west end of that office building. And then the market hall to the left. Uh, this is the office building, so it's a three-story, I'm sorry, a four-story building, three floors of office over a ground floor retail. Um, and then this is actually a really cool component, and I have to really tip my hat to Marty and his team. Uh, they worked very closely with the architecture and design team. Uh, the Metro East Community Media space in this building is actually going to be on two floors, and a portion of that is a double height space. Uh, with windows uh, on a garage roll-up door that will roll up uh, in the summertime. It'll be actually a, a really inviting space up there. But uh, when, the, when the garage door is pulled down at night, uh, the, the windows will turn into a video screen where they can actually broadcast their programming to the outdoors. If you're standing on the plaza, you can look up at the building and actually watch a movie, watch whatever programming Metro East might be broadcasting. And it's a real great opportunity to have some community events in the evening, movie nights, sporting events, um, other programming that Metro East is putting together. So I think this is going to become a really dynamic feature of the, of the project. Um, so I mentioned Metro East. They actually can't even wait until this building is built. Um, they, are, they moved in on a temporary basis into the old Rockwood Community Office Building where the tech shop will eventually go uh, and have already started delivering programming to the community, uh, teaching uh, classes, uh, digital literacy classes uh, to folks in the community. So I'm going to show you a really quick 90 second video of some of the work that they're doing there and then I'll, I'll continue on. So we're here out at Rockwood DIY, and our goal is to bridge the digital gap. So um, the issue that this program is trying to address is uh, the issue of the digital divide, which refers to the people who don't have the skills and access to technology in order to be um, full participants in society. Uh, every Thursday night we show up and they complete five weeks of training and uh, upon completion of this program they get a free computer from Free Geek. We just spend the night um, set, setting up their computers, uh, teaching them how to use the operating system, all of that stuff. I learned a lot about computers. Like today we had the uh, parents and teachers conference and it's right at a time where a teacher asked us where we had a computer at home. And I said, wow, yeah, we just got one. I mean, the first class last week we were teaching people how to use a mouse 
um, and we were doing it in a way that was respectful to them. We want to make sure that this is a very inclusive environment and welcoming to any person no matter what their um, barriers to attending class sessions are. So a lot of kids come to our workshops because we offer child care. Everybody was friendly. We feel like they're our, our family. I want to do something better. I have, I have my chance now. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, I, and I really want to thank Marty for his leadership. This was really he, his idea and his team said, we, we want to do this and, and we don't want to wait until the building is built. We want to start now. And this is the kind of story we need to be telling about Rockwood. This is, this is really impactful stuff to the people on the ground who are living there. And this is quite literally, it's not an exaggeration to say, this is changing lives for people who uh, really are already starting out at a disadvantage. So this kind of stuff, I think, is, is really what this project is about and why I'm so excited to, to be working on it with, with great partners. Um, so I'll just continue, uh, spin through here a little bit. So uh, this is Building B, we call it. This is, uh, I'm sure it'll get a better name at some point. Uh, <laughs> building B. Uh, this is the northern building, the mixed-use multifamily and ground floor retail with the health, the health center, the bank branch, and the child care. This is actually a shot looking from the MAC station into the project. Uh, and you can see that uh, it's a five-story building. For the most part, there's a, there's a podium there on the, on the ground floor. We'll have retail. Um, that corner piece is the only piece of retail we don't really know what's going to happen with it yet in terms of who's going to go there as a tenant, but uh, it's a great retail corner, so something good will go there. Uh, and there'll be a rooftop deck for residents uh, above that, uh, which would be a really cool space. Uh, this is a shot from the Rockwood Community Office looking across 187th. Pay no attention to the color scheme on Building B. Uh, it's, this is, we're still in the design process, so we don't know what the color scheme is going to look like yet, but it's probably not green and gray. We'll, we'll see how it ends up. Uh, but in terms of the form, this, this should give you a pretty good idea. Uh, this is a shot looking at some of the play areas on the plaza with the building uh, in the background. So again, trying to create a really dynamic uh, outdoor plaza space. And then this is the market hall. Uh, this is the market hall where the 30 food vendors and grocery vendors will all be located under one roof. Uh, if you've been in the community for a long time, if you grew up in Rockwood or you've been around a long time, you might recognize that thing above the front door there. That thing that I, that I am actually quite affectionate about is the old satellite restaurant sign. Uh, for Rockwood, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, all the way up to when they closed in 2001, was an icon for the community. Uh, the satellite restaurant and their sign were all created in 1957 when Sputnik went up, and so there was all the rage around the space age and the space race. So uh, we actually have the old sign, and we're in the process of refurbishing it, and we're going to reinstall it on the site. Uh, I think as we look forward into the future of Rockwood, it's really important that we pay homage to the past, that we recognize where we've been. And my hope is that uh, not only can we reinstall that old sign, which has a lot of meaning for folks in the community who've been there a long time, but that we also install a permanent uh, installation, maybe working with the Gresham Historical Society, of the history of Rockwood from going all the way back 100 plus years, uh, so that we know where we've been. Because I think that's really important when you're trying to figure out where you're going. Uh, so there's a, there's a historical component to this project that I think is really important as well. So you can see the entrance there. Oh, um, before I go further, you'll notice that on the, the left and right sides of this building, it's really kind of a building within a shell. It's a shell within a shell. Uh, the outer shell uh, actually reaches beyond the, the building proper on both sides, and you can see there are a couple of outdoor corridors there. This is what it looks like inside those corridors. So they actually have seating area, so you can sit outside when the weather's nice. And those restaurants indoors actually have windows that open up to the outside, so they can actually serve customers uh, outside as well. And in the wintertime, these windows will get glazed with some plastic sheeting and, and indoor, I'm sorry, outdoor heaters, so you can actually be out there 24 uh, 12 months a year. So this is the inside of the market hall, and I'm really excited about this uh, as well. This is a 40-foot uh, floor-to-ceiling height. It's going to be a large volume, a really beautiful wood truss system, and uh, a bunch of vendors, small vendors, we're talking 100 square feet each, uh, different sizes, but, but as small as 100 square feet, um, 
throughout the, throughout the building with a mezzanine above for seating. So you can kind of get a bird's eye view. You go grab lunch and then you go upstairs and you can uh, have lunch and kind of watch the activity below. Uh, and then below grade, there's actually, uh, this is the back uh, loading dock area. It's the prettiest loading dock in Rockwood. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, below grade, uh, this is a little um, exercise we did on lighting. So we've got clear story windows, skylights in the roof that uh, will allow a lot of daylight to penetrate into the space. And then below grade, there's uh, under the main floor, there's a commissary kitchen. So a lot of these vendors can go downstairs and use the shared kitchen space to create their food products. There'll be shared coolers and freezers and dry storage. There'll be a small office space for the kitchen manager uh, so that they don't have to go build out a whole kitchen. We talked about lowering the barriers to entry for folks who want to start a business. With the incredible diversity that we have in Rockwood, I think we have an opportunity to have a food ecosystem, food offerings in Rockwood that is completely unique to to the Portland metro area simply because of the diversity that we have. Uh, until recently, we actually had an Uzbekistani restaurant in Rockwood. Imagine what we could do if we're actually you know, purposeful about, about and organized about what we're doing. So the opportunity to have some really diverse food offerings here is really strong. But we also know that the folks who, um, who would start those businesses don't have a lot of capital to start with. So we're giving them the infrastructure uh, as part of the package so that they don't have to spend six figures to build out kitchen space. The kitchen space is included in their rent. Um, these are a couple of schematics of the, of the floors I'll kind of skip through. Uh, so where are we? Well, we are very close to the end of the design process. Uh, there's a couple of more, couple more um, approval uh, steps that we have to go through with the Gresham Redevelopment Commission and with the Design Commission. But we're anticipating groundbreaking late this summer. Uh, and a 14-month construction schedule, so opening in fall of 2018. And so um, I, I'll close there, and uh, before Brad jumps in, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to take one or two now, and maybe I can, and okay, great, perfect. All right, thank you all, appreciate it. <laughs>